a lot of great videos online, especially from Khan Academy, that explain prime factorization. But it might not necessarily address all the things that are in this class. So I just wanted to make my own video to make sure everything was clear. So for starters, numbers either fall into prime or composite categories. And prime numbers are anything, any number whose only factors, the only numbers that create it, and therefore the only numbers that can divide out of it, are one and itself. And because one isn't then going to multiply by itself, one is neither prime nor composite. It's kind of in this neutral territory. So it doesn't categorize as one or the other. It just exists on its own. Um, and so if we are looking at taking a larger number and trying to break it down to its prime numbers, we're trying to break it down to the numbers that are the smallest they can get. Nothing but one in itself can divide out of it. There is a chart uh, that you can check out to get a better list of it, but um, prime numbers are going to include 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, um, 29, and 31. I think I got them all, and we're not really dealing with much beyond that. Other than 2, Every other even number is prime or is composite because anything larger than two that's even can be divisible by two. So uh, if we are given a number like 154, seems kind of big. We want to break this down to all the numbers that if I multiplied them together, back together, I'd get back to this 154. So you might look at the number like 154 and just say, I have no idea what goes into it. Well, um, looking at this number ending in 4, we know it's even, which means I know I can divide 2 out of it. So when I divide 2 out, what remains? Well, 77 does. So 2 times 77 equaled 154. 2 is a prime number. It can't break down any further. I like to circle my prime numbers just so they're very clear and I don't accidentally miss them. Then I go to the 77 and figure out well, what two numbers multiply together to make 77. And there's no right or wrong answer um, if there's more than two numbers that can create it. In this case, it's only going to break down to 7 and 11. And those are both prime numbers. So we can't go any further than that. It's done. But if you were to look at something like 24, there is no right or wrong pairing that you choose because there's so many different numbers that multiply together to make 24. And if anything is composite, you can just keep breaking it down. So you could start with 4 and, oh, sorry, 3 and 8. And then, oh, 3 is prime, and then look at 8. 8 is made up of 2 and 4, and 4 is made up of 2 and 2. I could have also, with 24, picked, um, let's go with 4 and 6. 4 is made up of 2 and 2. 6 is made up of 2 and 3. Well, if I look at this, I still have 3 2s and 1 3 three twos and one three. So it doesn't matter which factors we choose, they all break down to the same base prime factors. So then we have a different, a couple different ways we can express this. We can then show this as a product, which means multiplying. And so we would have back here, we'd have two times seven times 11. Since I don't have any repeats, that's about as simple as it gets. And we do need to show a multiplication between our factors because these aren't independent separate numbers. Their meaning rests in coming back to this original number and we do that through multiplication. If I took, in this, in this instance, all of these numbers and multiplied them back together, it would get me back to that original value. So we always need a multiplication sign in between them. When we have instances like this, where we have the same number repeated a couple of different times, this is where we get to involve exponents. So, refresher on that, when we have something like 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2, 
We have repeated addition. We have this two being added together a bunch of times. Well, we have then multiplication to shorten that up. I have a two being added four times to get the eight. Well, when we have repeated multiplication, two times two times two, we have exponents to shorten that up, okay? Exponents are a way of rewriting repeated multiplication. So what number do I have over and over? A two. I write the two large because it's my base. Then how many times was that two being multiplied by itself? Three times. So my exponent for that is a three. I could call this two to the third power or two cubed. Whenever my exponent is a two, I could call it squared or to the second power. Whenever my exponent is a three, I can call it cubed or to the third power. Anything above that is just gonna be to that power, to the fourth power, to the fifth power. So when I have down here, I had two, three times being multiplied together. So I would put two cubed and then I had a three, so it would be multiplying by three. In math, we're going to be using the dot to represent multiplication more commonly than using the x anymore, because later on, as we advance in math, x goes to actually mean a number, and it gets a little confusing. So we like to use the dots, and this is just the process of breaking large numbers down into their prime simplified value.